Hey there everybody, Chef Adrian and I'll be here with you again and today I'm really excited to be sharing with you our kids cooking class. Today we're going to talk about breakfast and I'm really excited about this topic because we have four kids, our youngest is 16 now so we don't have any little kids but we spent that entire time with their childhood and I spent my entire childhood as well learning lessons while in the kitchen. So that's what we're going to talk about today about how to help your kids have those lessons in the kitchen they're going to take with them when they grow up and we'll turn those into memories that they're gonna, they're gonna take with them forever and might even actually get them to eat some food that's good for them too. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Our menu today is breakfast, tomorrow we're gonna be doing lunch and uh, Friday we're gonna be doing dinner. So today on the menu is French toast, we're gonna be cooking some sausage with it and doing some scrambled eggs. And we'll also do a nice pretty yogurt parfait. That's really easy for kids and guys if you wanna Cook along or follow along or write things down, feel free. We are going to have recipes for all this stuff available for you too, okay? There are some follow along things that uh, kids can do out there on the event page. There is the uh, coloring. I'm uh, going to be posting it at the end. I don't have it out there yet. Uh, okay, at the end, you'll be posting the coloring thing that kids can do with a few different things that... Uh, let, me, let me look at it one more time. It's our printer is... Uh, not working well today it's got streaks but there you go kitchen gadgets kitchen gadgets and things uh so a little bit about me guys my dad was born and raised in india my mom's american and my dad came here when he was 19. and so he did a lot of cooking growing up but it was all indian food now i love indian food but i'll tell you when i was a kid i was like i just want like a hamburger you know it'd be just so nice to have a hamburger and so when my dad makes hamburgers though or made it when i was a kid uh, he would always say, I would always say, Dad, can we just have McDonald's? <laughs> if you're going to make a hamburger, can we just have McDonald's? And he is always, every single time, the same thing. This is going to be better than McDonald's. Okay? <laughs> and so his idea of better than McDonald's is Wonder Bread, like that, with a hamburger patty that is mixed with onions and spices and cooked and then put with ketchup on the Wonder Bread, and that is the hamburger. <laughs> and that was sold as better than McDonald's. And <laughs> the thing is, it's a great story to tell right now because you know what? It really doesn't matter what my dad did back then. It would never be better than McDonald's because why? McDonald's was part of my childhood growing up. And as such, it doesn't matter what other foods associated, McDonald's part of my childhood. And when I was a kid, I was like, you know, when I grow up, I'm going to make a burger that's better than McDonald's at home. And you know what? I can't. I can make a burger that's better than McDonald's, but I cannot be McDonald's. And so with our kids, like, it doesn't matter what the food is, okay? My wife will tell you, when we have cel celery on hand, I like, I'll always eat celery and peanut butter. I just spread peanut butter on the celery and eat it, and I love it. And it has nothing to do with celery and peanut butter. It has everything to do with that's what my grandma gave me when I was a kid. So at summer times, we'd go and visit my grandparents for a month or for three weeks. And every time during lunch, that's how she got us to eat the healthy celery, right? She'd put some peanut butter on it. She's like, here, good for you. I'm like, I like peanut butter. That's great. Grew up eating peanut butter and celery. And now, if I want something healthy, it's peanut butter and celery. Why? Not because it's better than other healthy foods, but because I had it when I was a kid. So you have the power as parents to be able to be with your kids during those times and to help them grow up to enjoy healthy food and also be able to enjoy cooking and that, that experience and everything that that provides. So enjoy while we're talking about this time with your kids and all the time that you guys can spend together in the kitchen so let's get started okay and if there's any questions anybody has please post them ask questions i'd love to answer people's questions yeah we've got some great friends here already some of our kitchen consultants we've got jessica newkirk kelly walton audrey flanders rochelle bell and if we have any kids among us, uh, let us know. We'd like to know who our audience is. Um, if we have kids cooking along, say so, so we can talk to them. Yeah, and we're doing this, uh, all the information is gonna be on this event page. This is a new format for us. We're not exactly sure how the using the event page is gonna work for us. So we hope it works well for us. And uh, again, after this video, you're gonna have this to share. Please share this with your friends. Invite your friends to the next two days on the cooking classes. And we'd love to see you, okay? Yeah. All right, so let's get a little bit started right now. We're going to use a few things like a griddle, okay? A gas stove and an egg pan, okay? A knife, butter knife, fork, and we're going to use some simple ingredients, okay? But we'll talk a little bit about what age-appropriate activities are for the things that we're doing today. 
and you can translate those to other things you do in the kitchen. So we know that sausage is gonna take more time than anything else that we're doing. So I've already got this griddle heated up. I'm gonna cook the sausage and the French toast on this griddle and put that on there. Medium heat, you know, your 350. Cook a few of those, okay? And this can also be done on a, in a frying pan. That's no problem. In fact, a lot of times that's what we do as well. Just put it on a frying pan on there and cook it just fine. One thing kids a lot of times need to learn as they grow up, which are the meats that we need to cook a long time and which are the ones it doesn't matter as much because sometimes you can get sick from those things. So, uh, so are those frozen patties or are they are thought? Those are frozen sausage patties that we bought. Now you can buy uh, ground sausage that you can just patty yourself with it in your hands. You can buy sausage links, you know, or you can roll sausage links yourself if you want to. So whatever you want and yeah i was gonna say uh probably any age if they have clean hands you could let them patty out their own sausage yeah so in this activity i wouldn't let them near the hot griddle until at least the second age group which is not the toddler age group but maybe the four to seven age group here so toddler two to three eight years you can start teaching them some basic things about cooking basic things in the kitchen and help have them help and it's an important age for them to learn about hot and to stay away from hot. So you can do some smart teaching moments without high risk to help them learn about things in the kitchen so they don't get burned. I, I burnt all the skin off my hand, but that was just a few years ago. So <laughs> I wasn't careful. Uh, we don't want to do that. So it's better right. American, So here's the sausage and that's going. And now you're going to be able to just, you know, you can smash those as much as you want as those cook, but pork, is something that you always want to cook all the way through because you can get foodborne illnesses from those. So pork, always cook it all the way through. Chicken, all the way through. Okay, beef is something that is not necessarily that you cook all the way through. All right, and so darker meats, generally speaking, don't have the same requirement as the lighter meats as far as cooking them all the way through, okay? Okay. Uh, okay, so we have that going and we're gonna crack a few eggs just so we can make some French toast couple of eggs here and there's a few ways that you can crack eggs with kids four to seven they can start cracking some eggs themselves two to three year olds a little bit hard for them to be able to crack an egg obviously but you can do it by, by cracking them against each other if you have a hard rim I don't recommend doing it against plastic glass bowl you can do it against that or a glass countertop or something like that you can just do it like that just crack it. You don't want to let any of the moisture out and then just dig your and break the seal on the outside and pull it just like that, okay? No shells. And that's one thing you don't want to do is have it where you have shells in there because then you get a sandy crunch when you eat it. So nobody likes that. Maybe some people do. You never know. So about what age do you think a, a kid could actually crack an egg? You know, yeah. That's easily. a tough one. Four to seven years old, not a problem. Where they can start messing around. You guys, hopefully, you know, if there's shells in there, you can get them out. Uh, yeah, I'd um, recommend doing like Adrian has it where it's not mixed in other ingredients to start. Yes. So if there is a mess up, it doesn't ruin your stuff as much. Yes, but really important for kids to have little moments of success when they're young. And yeah, get practice. And for doing things correctly and for not doing things correctly, but for learning as well. So just a fork and you can just whip that, just like that, okay? Or you can use a wire whip and you can whip it with a wire whip, anyway. And with the egg, you can see it, it's kind of, you know, it's, what's the, what's the right word for that? Viscous? Uh, oh gosh, I don't know. Where <laughs> We want it to be a little bit more smooth. Now, if I'm going to dip bread right onto this, you can. You can dip it right in the egg and put it right on there. I like a little bit lighter egg, not just like straight egg. And so you can smooth this out a little bit and stop it from being so viscous with a little bit of milk. And so that's what I do is I add a little bit of milk. Again. Two eggs, I might ask about a, about a tablespoon of milk in there, okay? Yeah, again, if there's any, any kids uh, cooking along with us, let us know so we can, we can walk it through with you, too. Also, just a little housekeeping. Uh, we have several kitchen consultants here with us. Um, there are some of those kitchen consultants that are messaging me saying they can't find this live video. Um, again, it's a little different format than we've done, and so I did post uh, how to get onto this event page. But uh, events are, are a little different than group pages in that you have to press... Uh, discussion to see the posts and we are streaming live in, in a post 
So if one of you guys could like respond to everyone and let them know, that is where to find us. We were gonna, guys, we get it right. Yeah. And so I've added a little milk to that, make that a little bit smoother, so you get not quite as much egg, but still doesn't affect like it's not uh, doesn't soak it all up. And so as you see, we've got our sausage cooking there. I will give it a little bit of uh, easy to push there. Okay. Smelling now, good. You can put this right on the griddle without any oil if you want to. I like to put a little bit of oil because I like the texture it gives it when it cooks. Mm -hmm. right? But we're using a non-stick here. And so I just sprinkle a little, I love the, these things. You can get a restaurant supplier, you get even Walmart or somewhere like that, you can get those. Just squeeze a little bit of oil on there. And that's very kid friendly because if it was a mm -hmm. wide open mouth bottle that you typically get, it's more apt to overspill. Absolutely. So this gives a little more control with little hands. Yes. And that's very important to kids. Is when they have control over what they're doing, they're going to do a whole lot better. And uh, yeah, I really even wouldn't trust myself trying to dump oil <laughs> the on there at all. Uh, but here's a few things you know what that uh, two to three year olds can do. They can help setting the table. They can help with the mixing with the scrambled eggs, no problem. And even once you get the French toast going, the two to three year old can actually flip that once it's going. So I recommend having someone a little bit older put that on. And if you have a four to seven year old, they can probably put that on right there. And if you want to add a little brown sugar cinnamon to that, we have our brown sugar cinnamon sweetening. What we're going to do is we're going to put it on top as a topping. Okay, so that's really good. And so those two are going. And so while they're going, the third thing we do is take the least amount of time is going to be our scrambled egg. So I'm going to turn that on medium heat and get that going and warming up while this continues to cook, okay? A couple of other things that young children can do in the kitchen. Uh, as we get to doing the parfait cups, even the little kids can fill the parfait cups, all right? Because uh, if it's a little messy going in, it doesn't matter. It's okay. They're just having fun to fill it. And at the end, they have little layers. And if the layers look a little messy, that's okay, too. Uh, and then when you get, get up and when, when they decide to go pro with it, then they can make the layers look really, really nice, okay? <laughs> and we're going to do a few different toppings or fillings for the parfait. And, of course, the little kids, they can watch and assist you as you do more complex tasks. Now, story, when I was a kid, I like, okay, here I am doing what I love, which is teaching people how to cook. When I was a little kid, little toddler, I was in the kitchen, like, all the time, two, three years old. I was in the kitchen wondering what is for dinner, what are we eating? And my mom and grandma, for a long time, they would push me out of the kitchen. They're like, because, you know, mm -hmm. I was a little kid, it's not safe and things. And it did not take them long to realize that, oh, he's really interested. Like, he's really interested in what we're doing here. And then they started to foster that and encourage that, me to be in the kitchen with them to learn about cooking and food and safety and things like that. And so it was great to have that as a, as a young child, that fostering attitude with my mom and grandma. Little stars there. Okay, so the sausage patties there. Again, you want to have those all the way cooked through so they're not pink in the middle anymore, okay? And uh, a little bit of oil on the bottom. Not a lot, just a little bit there. Half a teaspoon to a teaspoon. And so really encourage you guys to help you, encourage your kids to uh, foster whatever is interest that they're showing interest in, you know. Just start dumping all kinds of love and support in the, the uh, topics that they're very interested in, especially when it comes to the kitchen. There are things like planting a garden uh, that would be really great to do with kids that helps them to learn how to eat healthy, how to uh, work hard and weed. Yeah, I'll just say even for myself growing up, uh, we end up, we had about two different um, Ve garden veggies at night and I grew to really love garden vegetables but part of that love came from actually helping in the planting and the harvesting I think anytime you can involve your kids it's that like what Adrian said that experience together it's the together time that especially in today's world that is missing and and can make it for bonding time and kids crave that so doing that in the kitchen you're teaching them wonderful life skills that will last them their whole life through and that's right. Uh, as we all know, we bring the good and the bad stuff from our childhood <laughs> with us for the rest of our lives. So it's very important to make sure that those things that we can bring with us, and of course we can teach ourselves to, uh, to carry forward the good things and the bad things 
Do we need to, to flip the... Uh, uh, I checked them just while you were talking. Oh, oh okay. Just about ready, right. but not quite. Must be. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit of milk to this, just like I did when we were doing that. What it does when you add it to eggs, when you cook scrambled eggs... A couple again, tablespoons? Uh, I've added a tablespoon, a tablespoon with two eggs. Okay. Is that actually helps make them a little bit more fluffy when you cook them. Would water work as well? Water would work as well. Okay. So I'm gonna put that in there. Now, age groups, right? The youngest toddlers, we don't want them to mess with anything this hot, especially on something that needs cooking. And so, four to seven year olds though, with some assistance, and even a toddler standing nearby can help and watch you. A four to seven year old can actually get in here and start mixing a little bit, keeping the distance. You can start teaching about safety. One thing that um, would be good to mention a few times uh, in case you're, you're popping in, we are actually um, going to have a drawing for a prize that will um, you can enter to, to win. We're going to show you those uh, what you'll win here shortly. It's going to be six of the smaller seasoning jars in a box right here, th those size, six of those little guys in a box. And the entry form is found on this event page in one of the posts. So if you click the word discussion or posts, you'll see it posted there, as well as the links in which you can support the uh, kitchen consultants by ordering through their links. Thank you so much. And I added some of our Mexican seasoning to these scrambled eggs. I really like the Mexican scrambled eggs. The Alves Incredible is really popular and the Strong Arm also. Give that a flip. We've got some lovely looking French toast there. The sausage is just about done too. Okay, and so we have right here a nice little breakfast of scrambled eggs, French toast, and sausage that's basically ready to go now. All we would have to do is just serve it right up on the plate. Do we have any, um, any questions in the group? Any kids that might want to know any tips or just please, please post and we will answer. With French toast, there's kind of a lot you can do with it after it comes off. You can do standard French toast, which is what most people like. Uh, you put some butter on it and some syrup, maybe some powdered sugar. Uh, or you can get even fancier. You can put fruit, you can put peanut butter we have. We have regular syrup. This is a really nice butter container. I just have to show this to you. We got this at Farmer's Market downtown here in Boise. It's beautiful. Uh, where this lid comes off, actually, and you have your butter in there. And just keeps it fresh and it keeps it, it doesn't melt in there. And I would call it a Swedish, he called it a Swedish butter thing. He makes pottery. Anyway, he makes them here. We love it. So, anyway, it's better than just having it on a regular, you know, saucer dish. Uh, but regardless of what toppings I like on my French toast, I always like a little butter. Okay, so I'll put a little bit of butter on there. So this is, I think, a great time where kids can be involved as well in the presentation. So one fun thing you can do is uh, make French toast sticks, right? Where you cut them into strips. Yeah. And would you do that before or after? Does it matter before you French cook? French toast sticks I would do before. For, so right? you can get so all the sides. There, so it does get the sides. It's really great. And thank you for, for that suggestion. So that actually is a really good one for kids. Finger foods. You can teach how to cut the bread in real simple uh, rectangles. And then you can cook them and then they're... Then you can fun. dip them in little... Dip them in syrup or something yeah. like that. Yeah. It's a really good idea. Makes it a little more fun. Uh, here is our brown sugar cinnamon sweetening. Let me take a look at it closer inside. And that so. has a... Uh, we put our own spin on the traditional brown sugar cinnamon. And what I'm going to do is just put a little bit on top there. All of our sweetenings mm -hmm. from mom to mom... You know, it's, it's completely natural sugars uh, and ingredients, so um, nothing artificial. I will mention that they're there's, not raw sugars. They are refined sugars, but they're, there's cane sugar and there's beet sugar, and there are some raw sugars that we use. Yeah. So, and no, no dyes, though. That's, I think, one of the best things yeah. about a lot of times when you have things that are sweet, there's, there's additives or dyes that can not be so good for kids. And so I'll take a couple of these. How do you know when patties. these are done? Well, I know they're done just because they've cooked definitely long enough. Long enough. Uh, but if you cut it open and it's still pink inside, then, you know, it's not done. 
And so we have right here, and that's Mexican seasoning on those eggs right there. Mm-hmm. Gives it a little color. Now, if you want, certainly would never oppose adding a little bit of syrup to just the top of that with the brown sugar cinnamon sweetening. And let me throw a little bit of powdered sugar on there too. Sometimes it's fun, you can go the fruit route, you know, put a little strawberry or berries on there, powdered sugar, exactly. little whipped topping. You can, you can play, like have it be a color palette of sorts of different bowls of things and kids can decorate their, their breakfast. Yep. And you know, as the older kids can, can help with other chores such as cleaning the dishes and putting dishes in the dishwasher and putting them away and things like that. Getting them involved is a great thing to do to get solid habits going with your kids uh, and nobody can argue really against that. Uh, great, uh, great to establish those habits when they're young, but it's even more important to establish mm. that time together when they're young. Yes. Right, so there's a nice little breakfast that you could do anytime. Kids can do this on their own. Mother's Day is coming up. Kids, you can do this for your mom. Yeah. You oh, good idea. Uh, something simple that's not too hard to mess up, right? Uh, and you can use our seasonings. We use the uh, we can use the Alvis Incredible on those eggs. Everybody likes that. Uh, if you don't want to take a risk on the next, if you don't know if your parents like it, Alvis Incredible. It goes on everything. All right. So that's breakfast. Uh, we're going to do the parfait now, okay, guys? And there's a couple things with the parfait. Typically, it goes in a longer, taller cup, which is a parfait. And what makes it a parfait is a layered aspect to it. And parfait is going to be usually a dessert or a breakfast or something with a yogurt or something lighter, okay? And so one thing we're going to do here is we're going to cut up some strawberries. And so I'll show you guys how to cut some strawberries. We've got some... And this one's just missing the little top green part, but you want to cut that top green part off. And if there is there, and I'm just going to cut a little bit of that off. Now, one way to cut a strawberry is to cut it through that way and flip it and cut it the other way. And that's quartered, all right? Um, there's actually tools that they sell that are strawberry cutting tools. Yeah. That you can use to get that top off and everything. It just pinches that top right off. And Anyway, when we were making uh, like strawberry cream pies at the bakery when I was younger, we do tons of strawberries, and uh, we grow strawberries when we were kids too, and grandparents. Oh, uh, they're so yard. good, fresh. <clears throat> and I just never knew when, good, when we're gonna get good strawberries or not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they can be fickle, and they're a favorite of uh, birds and other things that like strawberries just as much as us. Okay, be real careful when you're cutting, and kids, when you use a knife, be careful. Use it so that you're never actually cutting into the finger. Yes. You're cutting away from the finger, holding it like that, so that when you cut, you don't come down on that because this Skipping. is designed to cut through meat. So it's going to cut through your flesh, no problem at all, too. So if you do that, you should be really careful. Now, uh, a lot of things, uh, so one thing kids don't know, a lot of kids don't know, is that a dull knife is actually more dangerous than a sharp knife because you have to use more force to cut with a dull knife and you're more likely to make mistakes because it's not cutting right. Uh, and with a nice sharp knife though, even though you could get a worse cut, your chances of getting cut are much lower because your chances of making a mistake are much lower. Not pushing as hard. That's right, not pushing as hard. So we have a few ingredients, some granola, some chocolate chips, some strawberry. We have some strawberry yogurt here. And we have banana. Now, let me just cut up a, a banana really quick and we'll do a little uh, multi-layer. Now, you know, there's a few ways to open it. I just grabbed that and opened it the way you open a banana. If you ever have trouble opening a banana like that, kids, you can grab it a lot of times by the other end and it's easier yeah. to open that way. Just with a little pinch and a little pull other than trying to pull the, it and yeah, the stem in the whole top half of the banana. <laughs> Either way, but if you have trouble, you can always do it that way too. So I'll just break off a little piece of that. We'll do a very similar quarter cut like that, right down oh, the middle um, like that. Sorry. And right down the middle like that again, okay? And that's just cubing it. Yeah, I, I would recommend if you are having kids old enough to start learning how to cut, to use these type of softer foods like the fruits. Make it a little yep. safer to begin with. Yeah, don't start with butternut squash, okay? No. <laughs> that's hard for me to do, okay? I'm gonna take that off now, that's definitely done. 
Uh, okay, and just like French toast, you guys can think outside of the box would be parfait, okay? And think whatever you want to do on there, you can do. You have whipped cream, you have any other fruit, fruit blueberries, or anything you want to, you can do that. You can do a, uh, a cool whip mixed with our sweetenings, any flavor, we have strawberry, lemon, we have pumpkin spice, and if you mix a little cool whip with our uh, sweetenings, you can use that as a layer as well, or just plain whipped cream. Yes. Okay. Delicious. So, this is great for kids, especially younger kids, because it's so fun uh, to make layers. You know, at the fair, we go to the fair and they make sand art and do layered things. You do candles with layers and all kinds of things like that. And here, we're going to make a layer in a parfait, okay? So we'll put some strawberry there and you get to choose how you want to do the layers, okay? I'm going to put some banana. And I would say they're far more apt to eat it too if they actually created it. And that is a true. I know that it seems like a constant battle. Kids don't eat <laughs> sometimes when you want them to, but and you could probably uh, mess around with different ways to help them scoop that in or use one of those bottles. Yeah, of course, I'm just my, I'm using my my hands. They're clean, but you can use your spoon. In fact. I could cut a lot more and make really thick layers there, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, this, I think, would be a really great addition, like you suggested, for a Mother's Day breakfast. If you're concerned about kids with the uh, hot pan and stove, this is something they don't have to cook. And they can just, you know, with supervision, depending on the age, create a nice... Uh, art piece for breakfast for Mother's Day. Yeah, and guys, you can do whatever you want, like mm. I said with that. And I really do like a cool of our whipped cream in there as well. If you want to, you can do it really healthy as to, as well too. Whatever you want, you can use a nice Greek yogurt or something that's not necessarily just a fruity yogurt or something with mm -hmm. a lot of sugar. You could substitute all kinds of what you like to do uh, for your healthy, uh, for a smoothie, things that will work in a, in a smoothie will also work in a parfait. Absolutely. All right, so there's a few things that you can do, guys. Uh, now, uh, I think we talked about the, uh, the coloring thing, right? Yeah, we'll be posting that right after this is over. You can download it and print it out. Um, it's just encouraging you to have conversations with your kids about some of the kitchen gadgets and how they're used. Um, and you can use them together or whatever's fun. Right, so generally speaking, once kids get past that, say, four to seven year, years old, and they start hitting that eight to 12 years old, that's really where they can start doing a whole lot by themselves in the kitchen. And over 12 years old, basically, you can do anything with the right training, with the right understanding. You can do anything an adult can do, a teenager can do. Uh, and so that eight to 12 years old is a golden time. If your kid shows interest in cooking and food and the kitchen, uh, or even just likes to eat a lot, you can help <laughs> them a lot by teaching them and helping them to know how to cook basic stuff. And for those people that really, or those kids that really like to cook, and when, when, I, when we do a vendor events, like when things open up, we do vendor events, a lot of times, sometimes, it's the parents who let the kids decide what they like. Yes. Because it's so important that like, if the kid doesn't eat it, why are we gonna make it, right? So you gotta make stuff the kids like. And that's one thing that's really good about our seasonings. They are very kid friendly, but very all natural. And a lot, of, I really, really enjoy it when you get one of those kids that's just, they sit and they're like, okay, and like they have the food chops in the house. And you can yes. tell this kid has the food chops in the house. I'm like, oh, that's. That you can relate. <laughs> So yeah, um, thank you. Jen, what else do we have to cover here? Well, um, I wanted to share that we have an event or online uh, special. The so special, yeah, right. yes. we um, wanted this class and for people who are watching and listening to this class, we have a special coupon code for you right now is uh, because kids, we consider this like we call this, we've gone back and forth between travel size, RV size, dorm, starter size, it's kid size too, okay? So you get the little one. So we're doing a six pack here that sells for $20. You get to pick the jars online and we have a coupon code that the coupon is KIDS, K-I-D-S, and that takes $5 off. So $15 for the six pack here and you can order that for the next week anyway. Now through Sunday. Now through Sunday, thank you. Yes. Now through Sunday and you can get that for $15. Enter the coupon code during checkout, KIDS, K-I-D-S, okay? Awesome. And we also have a special, the May special is for 
of our any four of our glass jars, this size here, for twenty-eight dollars. We put it, bring it, put it in a nice wrapped uh, package for mm -hmm. you, and twenty-eight dollars for any four jars of your choice. Just go out to any of our consultants' websites. There, they're all the same. Make yes. Sure that they get credit for that sale. And, uh, yeah, their URLs are posted here in the event page. Uh, you can look at that. And in case you don't know about our seasonings, just we talked about the sweetenings. Um, those are all gluten-free. No MSG, no additives, fillers, dyes, or preservatives. And a recipe card is included to get you guys started. Yes, and we have a new shopping cart section of our website. So please go out to our uh, consultant's website and tell us what you think about that new shopping cart experience. So continue to provide you with more features out there, make it easier for your purchases. Uh, we're working on brand new product images right now. So yes. we're excited about that. We want to tell them one more time about tomorrow's cooking class? Yeah, tomorrow's lunch. And uh, what's on the menu for Oh, I have only my breakfast one. I can't remember. It's on the, uh, it's on the, uh, the, uh, P on the event page. Pizza? Right no, that's at dinner. The rolls? We were doing the wraps. the wraps and something else for lunch. It might have been breakfast. Was it the pizza? I think anyway, it was. Pizza I think and wraps. And wraps. Uh, anyway, we're going to add cookies to the dinner one as well as a dessert. So that's not yes. on there. We just decided to say, you know what, let's do some cookies too. Absolutely. So. One more look at what we got here. We made today. Hopefully you got to join along. Some beautiful French toast, scrambled eggs and sausage, and a breakfast parfait. parfait. So kids, if you're looking to, to spoil mom this Sunday with Mother's Day, this is a great start to the day. Thank you so much everyone for joining in. Again, please feel free to share this uh, video, invite everyone to the next two cooking classes that we have in coming up tomorrow, three o'clock uh, Mountain Daylight Time, as well as Friday at three. Thanks so much, we'll see you next time, tomorrow. Bye -bye.